Hey book two, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and I'm going to do a tag. This is a tag everybody does, almost everybody on booktube does this tag. It is the mid-year freak out tag. It is basically to talk about your reading so far this year. That's the halfway point of the year, which is June because it's the sixth month of the year. There's 12 months out of every year. So I'm kind of like, I have answers for the first five questions, but I have not talked about my answers for the rest of them, so I'm just gonna kind of wing it, which means this video is probably gonna be really long. Okay, so the best book you've read so far in 2020, and I'm going to say... The Eye of the World by Robert Jordan. This is the first book in the um, Wheel of Time series. Um, and I had a really good time with this. And I absolutely love this story so far. I, which, it's so funny because, you know, a lot of criticisms this series receives is not just that it's too long of a series, but it's very detail-oriented. Like, Robert Jordan describes every little detail. And that's kind of how Tolkien is. But... It's funny that I had a really good time, and I, I did not notice that when I was reading this book. But every time I try, because I've tried to read a few times The Fellowship of the Ring, and I just could not get into it. It just, I would get into chapter four, and I would get bored, and not want to read it again, and not want to pick it up again. And now I think in the case of that, it's partly because I'm so used to the movie and love the, the Lord of the Rings movie, so it's like, oh, you know, I've seen the movies. I don't need to read the book, even though there are a lot of things... Especially in that case, that, you know, aren't included the movie because it would make the movie too long. But, I just, I did listen, I have listened to it on audiobook. So, which is fun, it was good. Um, but, despite, you know, I did not notice it so much in this book. You know, it did not bother me. I was still able to enjoy this, enjoy the ride. And spending time with these characters and in this world and you know I like the magic systems that have been introduced the idea of this world and the different kind of character characters we met so far it's just a really fun story and I think Daniel Green has really gotten me excited to continue with the series and keep going with it um which it's funny that I feel like it takes a certain kind of person to get me excited and get me to take pick up or watch a certain, you know, a certain story. Like, just because you say that, oh, you should watch this, I think you'll like it. That's not necessarily going to get me just because you think I like it. You know? Um, and sometimes it just takes a different kind of trigger, not just someone telling me, oh, you should check this out. I think you'll like it. I think it's your kind of thing. It's like, just because you say that does not mean, in fact, like, unconsciously, I'll feel the desire to not to prove you wrong. And be like, you know, just because you say I like it doesn't mean that I'm going to like it. Like, I don't like that pressure of feeling like I'm being forced to check something out. Like, even if they're not really forcing me, they're just recommending it to me. That's what, And what's great about BookTube is that people are not telling, talking directly to me. They're not saying, oh, you should check this out. Like, they might say that, but they're talking to all their audience. They're not just talking to me. They're talking to me specifically. They're talking to everybody in general that watches them hoping that like there's less pressure on me because they're not talking to me specifically they are just saying it's a great book that I love it and I think everybody else would love it too but if you don't love it and you, I'm wrong then that's fine um I mean I get why like in the case of Terry I get that she wants to talk about things with you know wants to share wants to bond over certain you know shows and books and stuff well more shows than anything but she doesn't read as much, you know, again, as I've said before, she's kind of picky about what she reads, and we do not have a lot of books in common. It's hard for me to pick up both a book we both can read, so it's kind of hard for me to ever do a buddy read with her. And um, same thing with the other two, my other two best friends, because they are all so busy and they have their own lives. And um, But, yeah, like, she has been wanting me, me to watch Cobra Kai with her, and I'm just not interested. I finally, the last time she brought it up, I was like, look, I did not like the movie. I didn't care about the movie. Yes, I was, you know, I have watched it. But no, that's not me telling you I like the movie. It's just me saying that I've watched it. And sometimes when I'm bored, I'll, you know, I would watch it if it was on TV. You know, in fact, I kind of preferred the the one with 
what's her name? The girl, um, actress, remember, brunette, long brown hair, um, what is her name? I cannot think of her name. Um, I don't know if she's doing currently. I don't know what she's doing right now, but anyway. Um, so I had to tell Tarion I did not care for the movie, and I will not care for the show, because I don't want to see a movie, that's a show that's to do with karate, and I know, she'll say, well, it's not just about that, it's about people in their lives, and blah, 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 but every show is like that. Every show is about people in their lives. No show isn't. You know, every show has a drama about people's lives and stuff. Even crime dramas, like CSI and Law and & Order, you still get a glimpse of people's personal lives in their relationship issues. So every show is going to do that. So it doesn't matter. I mean, like, the same thing with Larissa when she's trying to get me to watch Walking Dead. You know, the only, like, I do know some, I do get some references, but she's like, oh, you should check it out. Or, but then because, you know, it's like, well, I'm sure it's great, and it's not just about the zombies. I'm sure it's not. I, I believe you when you say that, but it's the, you know, the what gets you interested is the a zombie thing. So, if you try to force, try to get me to watch something, if you think I'll like something, you tell me, oh, I think you'll like something, then that's going to make me less inclined to check it out. But, yeah, I really, but anyway, back on topic, I really love this book. It's so fun, and I will be reading the second one soon. In fact, the second one is part of the answer to um, the last question, question number 13, but I will get to that in a minute. So, next is best sequel you've read in 2020 so far, and I decided to pick two because one of them is not technically a sequel sequel. Like, when I think the word sequel, I think a second book in a series. Or, like, if a book has, you think it's going to be a standalone, but the author decides to make a sequel, a part two. That's not, but it's not necessarily, it's just, it's a duology kind of thing. Um, so I picked two answers for this. The first one that I thought about was Finale by Stephanie Garber, the third and final book in the um, Caraval trilogy, and this was so awesome. Such a great finale, so much going on, my emotions were all over the place. Um, and now I'm not one of those people who throw the book across the room, but I am one of those people who will scream and yell the book. I do that with TV shows too and movies. I will, um, I will yell and get mad and pitch a hissy fit. And unfortunately, I have to be careful because if people hear, like my mom or my dad hears me, it's like the kitchen is right outside my room where my mom hangs out. So if I get a little too loud and they hear me, they'll be like, oh my god, what's wrong? Are you okay? Or they'll be like, you need to calm down. It's just a work of fiction. It's not real. And the problem is, even though there are other people I know that are worse than me, I'm the only person they see. I'm the person they worry about because I'm their daughter. So of course they're going to worry about me more and they're going to care more. But I can't help but sometimes feel a little indignant because, look, I'm not the only person who does that. Everybody gets all oh, reacts to things. I mean, when my mom watches baseball, of course, her argument is, well, it's real. It's a game. It's not a make-believe story. It's it's real life. It's like, yeah, but it's not, I mean, yeah, maybe not a story or maybe real life. But you know what? You're still going to react. And I could be like, it's just a game. It's not a big deal. Um, but it's not. It's not just a game. At least not to her or other sports fans. It means something to them. It's special to them. So, of course, they're going to have reactions. But, um, so much goes on in this book. It's It, it was crazy. All this relationship drama was driving me crazy, but in a good way. Um, all the, and then towards the climax, it was like, I was getting very nervous. And very scared for one of my couples. And I was like, no, why are you doing this? Don't do this. Do not do this to me. And, but I also had to remind myself, this is Stephanie, you know, this is a YA fantasy. The author, Stephanie Garper, is not going to let me down. She's not going to end it that way. You know, I feel like you can, you know, with why young adult book endings, unless there's a reason, you know, it's supposed to end kind of bittersweet or sad. Like in a fantasy, you know it's going to end happy and characters are going to survive and everything's going to be all good and everything's going to work out for everybody. Um... And I was just so nervous, and, you know, I have attempted to go back and read that scene, because, again, as I did with Charmed, you know, just like with Charmed, I kept watching my favorite scenes over and over again, and I kind of like doing, like, I did that in the Harry Potter, the third book. I kept going back to reread my favorite chapter. That's what I do. I like to go back and reread it again and again and again. You know, it's a lot easier, though, to do that with uh, um, watching clips on YouTube of my favorite shows, which... It's kind of funny because 
yesterday. Now, I have not watched the show in a long time. I stopped watching the show at one point. Um, in fact, the last thing I remember, the last, I, I do remember the last part that I, you know, that I got to before I quit watching the show and lost interest, because it was just, it was soap opera drama stuff, and I feel like I can only deal with that so much. That's why I'm very nervous about season three of Charmed. And the reboot is not the new one, it's not the old, it's the new one, the reboot, because apparently people get mad and, you know, are like, oh, they should have called it a different game and a different name because it's not the same. Um, but, like, season two was full of a lot of angst for my favorite ship. They, it took them so long to get together, um, which kind of happened in this one, but it was, I guess it was a little easier with this one because I can get, I can read it. You know, even though I'm a slow reader sometimes with the YA book, I get through this pretty fast. So, I got to, you know, where everything was okay for the couple really fast. I mean, not super fast, but I could get to it faster than with a TV show where I don't have any control of how long an episode is and how long it takes to get to the moment when the couple gets together. Um, and this is coming from a girl who does not read the romance genre. I just like when romance is in the story. You know, but anyway, um... But... Anyway. Um, what was I going to say? I'm not talking about the romance, the relationship drama. But anyway, I, I, you know, it took so long, and the characters were being really stubborn, and I wanted to shake them and be like, stop being dumbass, and talk about this. It's, you know, stop enough with, shove your pride in working out, and just, you know, you got something good going on, where are you going to give it up just for, you know, the sake of something else that is not, it's not worth it, if you're, you know, you're alone and don't have any, anyone to share it with, kind of thing. Um, and the villains were so deliciously evil and scary. I mean, one of them, who we meet in the second book, can control your emotions. Which is terrifying because, like, he does that to one of the characters, one of our main characters. And it's like her emotions are not her own. And they're the emotions he wants her to feel. He controls her emotions. And that's kind of part of what made me nervous towards the end. And so scary and I'm like no that's not how you feel it's not real it's it's him controlling you and it, it's kind of you know it's kind of like you know it would be dangerous kind of like Stockholm Syndrome if you think about it like if she had stayed with him if I mean if he kept her and his his power over her was not defeated that's all I'm gonna say because I'm getting into dangerous territory and spoiling things for you guys if I keep talking about it, but, um, and then the other villain that they introduced was really freaking scary, and just, the whole concept of Caraval and these fates is just so cool, and I would love to go to Caraval without all the dangerous stuff, but, um, just to explore and experience it, and I would love to see, I would, I want this trilogy to be made into a movie, I would love a movie, the movie rights to be sold for this to become a movie, but it will depend on the right, it will depend on Sophie Garber. And how she feels about it. Does she want to be a movie? Because there's some author... Like, I think Robin Hobb does not want her books made into... Adapted. She doesn't want them adapted for the screen. Which, I can respect that. But I just would... That's another one that I would really love a movie adaptation. Or a TV show adaptation. But if she doesn't want it, then it's... You know, she doesn't want it. And that's up to her. And the same thing with Stephanie Garber. And it's up to her if she wants this. But I think it would be such a fun movie. And, like, to see Carable come alive. And see all these, you know characters and just I think it would be in the fates and stuff I think it would be so cool and they can have so much fun with it um and they could expand the world a little bit if they wanted to and then the other one is an actual second an actual second book that I want to talk about and that is um the Barchester Towers the second one in the bar Bar Set Shire series by Anthony Trollope. Um, and talk about soap opera. This is such a soap opera, too. I mean, it's basically about this community that church is very important. Their, their church is very important to them. It kind of runs the community, and it's the, you know, it's kind of like the government of this small town. And in this second one, the archbishop dies, and his son automatically assumes he is going to take over, but then someone else gets the job, and they bring along some people that the guy does not like. And there's a bit of rivalry and political tension, religious politics, and 
the warden, the former warden that we are introduced to in the first book, he and his daughter are kind of caught in the middle of the drama. Um, like, the main enemy of Dr. Grantley, the guy who the Archbishop's son, he sets his sights on wooing the warden's the former warden's daughter, Eleanor, because she's got a lot of money from her de from her husband who had passed away in the beginning of the book. So he's trying to woo her and get her to fall in love with him, but and so Dr. Grantley does not like that. He cannot stand this guy and doesn't want her to fraternize with the enemy, so to speak. And it kind of puts her in the middle. And then she has another guy who wants to bury her because he's in debt. And he figures if he marries the witch widow, the rich widow, then he'll get he can use her money to pay for the debts. Which well, this guy turns out to be actually a nice guy, you know, not that bad. And he was honest with her by the end. Um, and then we also meet another love interest for her. Who you know, it's one of these things where at first he does not realize his true feelings for her, until he realizes that she might be marrying someone else. So there's a bit of a She's going to get caught between three guys, three potential suitors, and has to decide, mix that with Dr. Grantley, you know, being like wanting, you know, Dr. Grantley and Eleanor's father, you know, wanting to get the, tr getting power, getting power back from these other people, and, but, you know, and Grant, you know, I cannot stand Grantley, but I love, the, you know, Eleanor's father, he's such, he, he's such a great guy, and he is loyal to his daughter no matter what, to Eleanor no matter what. Even if she might marry this one guy that they, the enemy, he's going to be loyal to her and support her. And just, he's not going to judge her if she marries, if she marries that guy. We don't know what's going to, I'm not going to say what happens. But, um, he's such a sweet, honorable man. He loves his daughter no matter what. And there, there is such great characters, so interesting characters, such interesting characters, and I would love to see, like, a movie adaptation of this series, or a T or a mini-series adaptation of it. Um, I think it would be really interesting to see, like, a modern with some of today's British actors. I think that I would like to see that. I don't know if they've ever adapted these. I, I want to say that they have. I mean, even Terry herself says she thinks she's seen the mini-series. I mean, but who knows, because I'm guessing it's been a long time since she's watched it, so it might not have been that. She just might assume that it's that, because, like, the title or something, but it might be. I'll have to look it up, though, at some point. I'll have to see if there's, if there is one and who's in it, if they want I know. But this was so great and so fun, you know. And this was one of those, you know, storylines that, like, only in a certain way I will like it. Like, I will not like a contemporary version of this. I won't find it as interesting. Like, I like that it's a classic. It's historical. Um. But, yeah, it's just, it's great. I like the series so far, and I hope more people check this, check Anthony Trollope's work out. And I know that Steve Donahue was ho is this year is hosting is hosting a read along of Trollope's standalone because of, he has two major series but he also writes a lot of standalones like the way we live now I think is considered a standalone although I think it takes place in the world of one of of either this series or the parliamentary series um, which now I have the first book of that one so I, those are the two sequels that I absolutely love this year so far anyway. Um, new release you haven't read yet, but want to read. And I said The Glass Hotel by some, by Emily St. John Mandel. I read Station Eleven. I did like it. I didn't absolutely love it, but I did enjoy it. And I want to read Glass Hotel, which is her other book. The premise sounds very interesting, very intriguing. Um, I don't have it. I haven't bought it yet. And although if th that the cover would fit the answer of one of these questions... On this tag, the question about the most beautiful book you bought, but I have not bought it yet, so I can't, I don't, I can't use it, because I don't have it. Um, I don't remember, I cannot tell you off the top of my head what it's about, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, I am interested in reading it. Okay, that was question number three. Question number four is most anticipated release for the second half of the year, and I just went ahead and said, um, The Silvered Serpent by Roshni Chotsky. Um, that is the sequel to The Gilded Wolves, um, which is, it's about a group of this guy who, he was part of the noble class in 1890, 1899 of France, 
in, in this world, they do, there are people that, there are magicians, people who do magic, and he is, um, trying, but some, something happened to where he lost his family's inheritance, and his family got, died, died off, so he's trying to get, it, get it back, so he hires a bunch of, um, a bunch of people to help him do that, and they have to rob this, I think it was a museum or something, they have to steal all these objects to get, to get his family's inheritance back. So you know, along those lines. And this is the sequel. Um, it kind of, and again, yeah, it has some similarities to Six of Crows, but it's a totally different story. The magic is different, obviously. I know that it did receive criticisms for people did not understand the magic, but I personally, now it's been a while. The only reason is it's been a while. I haven't reread it in, lately, so I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember being fine with the magic system. I thought it was really cool. I just don't remember it at the moment because it has been a while since I've read the book. Um, but I do need, I want to buy the, the book soon. I don't know when it's coming out yet because, well, with the pandemic and everything, a lot of books are being, you know, put on hold to be released because people will not be able to go to the stores and buy the books. Although right now, like in North Carolina, here in North Carolina, I think places are, we're in phase two where things have been opened up. So there, you know, things that, you know, stores where you don't really have to, you don't have to worry too much. You can just, like, walk in a little bit in some places, like the roast office bookshop that I normally go to that's 10 minutes walk from here. I can't go in there, but they're doing that pick up thing, pick up and drop off. And unfortunately because I don't really know exactly what is at that store so it's like there's no point in me going and doing the picking up and dropping off thing because I mean I don't know what's there so I don't know what's available for me to buy will I be interested because every time I would go there I would just kind of browse and see what books were offered and pick one so I didn't I don't have a book in mind um so and then that's the other one of the other bookshops that I go to in Southern Pines is the same. I think they're also doing that as well. I think. I would have to look it up. Um, and then there's another one. I think it's in Aberdeen. A smaller one that's also an used bookstore like the Roast Office. But I don't know if we can go in there. I, don't, I think that's also the same thing. The picking up and dropping off stuff. But again, I don't know what's there. What they have at the moment. Um... And some of the things that I've seen there, that some of the books I've seen there, it might not be there anymore. So I'm just waiting until everything opens up again, um, which is probably good because, you know, I need to get through all my books here. I want to be able to turn around a lot more books. Um, and, you know, although, but Books A Million is open, so I've been going there and shopping at Books A Million. So, but I, I don't know when Silver Servant, The Silver Servant is going to come out. I know that the other sequel I was looking forward to this year, Ruthless Gods, already came out, but I haven't bought it yet. So. Okay, biggest disappointment. And I just went ahead, this is question number five. Biggest disappointment, I went ahead and said Keeper, The Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger. Um, and that's just a disappointment for me, because it's still a fun series. It's just, I do not like, in book seven, I just had enough of some of the drama and it's a middle grade series about um this girl who discovers that she's an elf from another world and she was actually a genetically engineered elf she was created by this rebel group and they sent her in hiding in the human world to protect her and sent her to live with two human parents and um she discovers that she ends up accidentally just stumbling on the world that she originally came from. And she has all these cool powers. Um, she's like super elf, if you think about it. And it turns out that she is caught in that she was created as a weapon to help this rebel gr group of rebel elves defeat another group of rebel elves who are very, they're terrorists. And um, she's kind of caught in the middle of this all. And, you know, she's still a young kid she's a teenager so there's all this romantic drama romantic drama and then there's friendship drama and just the romance i just got tired of it because like i mean i try not to be one of those people who's like if you're not with the guy i would choose then i don't like it anymore 
I try not to be that way, but I was kind of annoyed that she, it seemed like they were leaning in the direction of a certain guy that she thought was going to be the end game. The character drove me nuts. I couldn't stand him. He was a whiny bitch. And he just was such, he's such a jerk. And, like, I think our main character deserve better. But there are some people who do not like Sophie, our main character, and find her annoying, too. And some people say, oh, they deserve each other. But there was a male character that I wanted, I admit there was a character that I wanted her to end up with. But, like, the seven both and I spent the whole time wound in the hospital. Because they both got hurt. And it's like, are you kidding me? So you spend the whole book with them in the hospital. I mean, she could have just skipped over that. The hospital stuff. But they just wanted them back for some alone time to have some cute little moments of lovey-dovey stuff and be like, guess what? They're in the end game. Now, there are some people, I think, who do like this character and, um, you know, ship that couple, but it just got annoying. And now when it got, they barely got any training stuff because they're, they're in the middle of this war and they need to train how to fight. And it's like, the the kid, I know they're supposed like kids and stuff and they're all squeamish, but I mean, I've read so many YA books that... A lot of the YA books I've read, those kids don't ever get squeamish. They have, they know what needs to be done, you know, even if they don't like it. They do not get all squeamish about blood and stuff, but of course the, the elf community in this world is very passive. Which is like, you guys need to wake up, you're in the middle of a war, you have enemies everywhere, you need to stop being so passive all the time and stop getting all squeamish about blood and killing people. Because you're in the middle of a war, and the bad guys, and I know that, you know, normally in some cases I'm like, don't stoop to that level, but you know what, in this case, I think they're going to have to stoop to that level if they if they want to preserve their community and they want to defeat the bad guys. Um, and then, like, I can't remember what I'll say that bothered me, but it's just, there are so many things, I just got so tired of it, I got fed up with all the drama and stuff, and just... It's just too much, so I stopped reading the series. I mean, I just want to know, like, who Sophie's going to end up with, and then I'm fine after that. So I'll probably look it up on Wikipedia or something, or ask someone, watch a review or something. Um, let my, like, basically let myself get spoiled. Because I don't want to bother with the series anymore. But I do kind of want to know. I still kind of want to know how things are going to turn out in the end. At least if my couple, the couple I'm reading for is going to end together. Then I'll know, you know. But anyway... So, yeah, that, that was my biggest disappointment. But I did have fun with it. The series is fun, so don't entirely go by my my opinion of it. Just check it out, because you might actually like it. You know? You might not have the same problems with it that I do. Okay, so next is... Okay, this is where I don't have answers anymore. Daddy's home. You want to go see Daddy? Go see Daddy. Daddy's home. Daddy's home. Go see Daddy. Daddy's home. Okay, um, okay, Rasmus is in probably start parking because my dad just got home from his, his errand. He went to go get the car, um, get his car checked out, checked on. So Rasmus is probably going to be bark. He's going to start barking. Okay, so biggest surprise, um, let's see. What is my answer for that? Let me think about all the books I've read so far. Um, I really enjoyed Age of Innocence. Um, last time I walked was fun. I guess, I guess that's a big choice to be this one. I mean, well, I mean, in all, in all honesty, my biggest surprise of the year so far is not a book. But, um, since we're talking books here, maybe we'll say, this was my, I guess this was my biggest surprise, because I wasn't sure if I would like it or not. Like, I had already read, what, attempted to read one of the books in the series, because I got it at the library, not realizing that I should probably read the first few books in the series before I read that one. Um, and I had fun with this, you know? It was really interesting, it deals with, it, it deals with the Salem's Witch Trials a little bit, um, it takes place in Germany about this midwife who is accused of witchcraft when these little, these children turn up dead with all these weird symbols on them and the community thinks, oh, it's it's witch, it's a witch. They're all freaking out and stuff and the hangman of the community does not believe that she's a witch. She thinks these people are being paranoid 
and he decides to um, take her case and help her out, try to prove that she's not a witch with the help of the town doctor's son, who's also, I guess, the town doctor. Um, they have to prove that she's innocent, but it's not that easy, of course, and Sir Thomas can't, apparently, and there's also a subplot of him being in love with the Kingman's daughter, the title character, but she's not in there that much, you know, which is kind of funny. That it's called the Tangman's Daughter, but she's, like, not in there. I just found that, you know, really kind of funny. Um, now, to be friendly on your, you know, I mean, I do feel like it's a surprise, but there could have been other books that could have been a big, that might have been a big surprise for me. I just haven't, like I said, this is kind of a spur of the moment, the rest of these questions. But, yeah, that was, that was fun. I didn't actually not think about it. I could use the answer that for the next one. Um, new to the author or his name. Um, hmm. What are some new authors? I just I don't want to use that same book because that, that is technically a new to me. Um. Okay, I'm just going to go ahead and say it, even though I didn't finish the book, it's the only thing I can think of, is, um, um, Homer, who wrote The Odyssey. I, there's only two works I know of that exist by him. Um, that's The Iliad and The Odyssey. Actually, this could be also a big surprise, too. This could also answer the biggest surprise. But, um, I haven't finished the book, so I guess that is, but it's, at the moment, is the best I can think of. Um, because the book itself was, you know, I guess very, you know, it could just be the translation itself. I, could, I really can come up with a better answer than this, but I don't have one at the moment. Um, I'm trying to think of new to me, what book is new. Um, I mean, I, I would love to say, like, Elliot Brooks, for instance, but I can't really, I have not got very far in the book so far, but I do like what I've read so far of her books. Um, okay, I'll just, I don't want to waste your guys' time, so I'll just stick with this. So, we're, I mean, it's probably more the translation than anything, but this is just very easy to read. I'm actually really liking the story. It was really, it's really fun so far. So really, it's just this particular story itself, the Odyssey, which I did not think I would get into, but I had a good time with it. Um, and I'm looking forward to reading the Iliad when I finish this one. But it's, it was really cool and really fun. And like I said, it's more the book itself, probably than the author. Um, but I definitely want to read more of his. Homer's, like, I want to read the Iliad, and I don't know if he's written anything else. I'll have to look. But, like I said, it's really more, probably more the, um, the book itself. But, like I said, this is a poor answer. I could do better, but like I said, I don't want to waste your guys' time having to look. I shouldn't have continued to prepare for this, but I just wanted to go ahead and film this. So, yeah. Bad answer, but it's what you got. That's the answer I'm giving you. Okay, so, a new fictional crush. I don't have a new fictional crush in a book. Um, I do, like, um, I do like Arabin. I do like his character. I think he was nice. I marry him. <laughs> Existed. Um, and then I still love, but this isn't really a new one, but Legend and his brother Julian. So it's not technically new, but you know, I kind of like these guys. I would, I would marry these guys. And you know, um, so I'm trying to think. I, um, is there any, I feel like I haven't really gotten to actually the characters in Eye of the, in the Wheel of Time yet. I'm trying to think, and I don't remember the characters that well in 
ballast or anything like which although I guess I can't count them because I haven't read the sequel yet. Um still like Geralt. So I don't I I guess I don't really have one. I mean all my fictional crushes are mostly on TV now. <laughs> um so they're you know, yeah, they're still on TV. They're still TV characters. <sighs> okay, so next is newest favorite character. Hmm. Again, I don't think I can answer for that one either. Um, <laughs> Odysseus is kind of funny, kind of fun, because he's such a such a little shit. <laughs> Odysseus, he's just like I got to the part when they meet the Cyclops. I was like, dude, you idiot. He's so like he's so entertaining and interesting. And then, um. so hard because again I should have planned this ahead of time but I don't remember but there because I did read a lot of interesting characters um I read like I remember I read the second book of of um the John Ambassador series and I still love John and Locke oh, like I said it's so much easier if this with TV to remember characters on TV shows um, so I guess I don't really have an answer for that one, either. Book that made you cry. I don't cry when I read books. I, I just don't, for some reason. Like, I cry when I watch TV shows. I mean, I mean, I think I know why. I think because you get the visual, and you're not, you know, you don't have to pull it out of your own head. You can just, it's there for you, and someone else presented it, so you, and you hear the actors' voices, and you get the music and stuff like that, and you get the effects and all that, so it's easier for me to get emotional over a TV show or a movie than a book, because, you know, it's, it's already there. I can grasp it. I can see it. I can hear it. I can smell it. I'm not just using my own imagination. Um, okay, book that made you, that made you happy. Oh, well, I mean, finale made me angry, if you want to count that. Books that made me angry. Um, book that made me happy. Hmm, well, it's been a little book that I read that made me happy. Um. That's so funny. I don't read a lot of happy books. Um. Oh my, like, I read a lot of fantasy and they don't always, they're not always happy. Um, and like I said, what really, oh, um, I guess I mean, some of the books that made me happy were, like, hmm, let me get it. Oh, um, this one kind of made me happy. I had a good time with this one. I was happy to reread it. Um, like, Lady of the Woods of Uprooting. And then. kind of made me happy because I like them as always. Brandon Sanders has op op awesome magic systems and it was kind of, you know, um, and I feel like it had a happy ending for the characters, you know? And, you know they just, they it ended up working out for them. They defeat the bad guys. And it was, it was, just, it was fun. I had a good time. So I guess this one made me happy. I, I really enjoyed Warbreaker. So, next is most beautiful book you've bought this year, or received. Um, Elliot's book. I love the cover of Elliot Brooks's of her book, her first book in the series. I love this cover. I love the purple and the snake, the, the snake. Um, I wonder what kind of snake that is. Well, I'm trying to get what kind of snake is that that is. Love this cover. It's so beautiful and just I am I think I wanna say I'm wondering if it's it's I can't remember his channel name, but J is um first name is J. I not remember his first name. But book design is J S Kennedy. Oh nice. But I, um, 
all the book design, basically all those people. They did a great job. I really like this cover. It's so beautiful. Like I said, the purple. Um, there's and I really love these. These are some of my favorite editions of classics. I think they're only at Books a Million. I think they only are sold at Books a Million. But they're really, they're really pretty. This is Bleak House, and which I already had a paperback copy of Bleak House, a mass market paperback, but I decided to get this one because it's a bigger book and it will be easier to read when we go traveling and stuff. Um, like yes, the reason why I like buying mass market paperbacks is because they're small and they're cheap, but I can learn to be more interested in books that are this size, especially if it's a book this long, and this is like 800 pages. So, I think it'd be easier to read a book that was a little bit bigger. And you can see, look at that. It's so pretty. And I love the colors. I'm, I'm a big color person. I like I like a nice color palette. Um, and then there's this one. I really like this one. The moonlit, the moonlight setting with the house. The um, and this Thorn Thornfield Hall. I really think that's really pretty. Um. I just love these editions. And with this one, it was one of these things where, like, I let, I gave the, my copy, my original copy, my mass market copy to my cousin. Because it's not like we hang out that often, you know. She lives in a different state. So it's, and it's not like we do a lot of family get-togethers. And when we do, it's, I'm not thinking about the book at the time. I'm just, I'm like, and, you know. So I ended up buying this new, this new bigger copy. You know, and like I said, I love these editions, so, and I feel like it'll be easier to read this one. Not that I had a hard time reading the other one, but the other problem with small, minuscule print in the mass markets is that it's even worse when I read it in bed. Like, last, you know, like, last night I tried to read Lady Midnight, and I just fell asleep. I only got through, like, four pages of Lady Midnight, and I was just too tired. So, and that's not even, that's not even small print. That's not even minuscule print. It's, it's big print. It's large print. But I still, you know, in large, bigger, small print is even worse. And then I had to basically read the same sentence, like, hundreds of times before I can get to the, you know, rest of the paragraph. And then finally, like, with last night, I was like, okay, I'm done. I, I need to go to bed. I'm falling asleep here. Like, it's the problem with this book. It's minuscule print. So, the book's the size I have to read during the day because then I'll... And then the original answer I was originally what I was gonna the answer I was gonna give was this one. Um, and I can officially say I actually bought it because my mom. Yes, my mom did the whole process of, of ordering because I never ordered things online before. Um, she was the one who did the actual physical ordering of the book, but she you know she used my money to order it. And this is the second book in the Seven Waters series. It was originally a trilogy, but it became a series. And I love these covers. They're like, they look like artwork. They're really pretty. They look like a painting. Um, it's just, it's really, it's just, I feel like it's really pretty. And I was, you know, in my, I read my other books in the series are all mass market paperback, so my first thought when I first saw this is like, oh, it's not mass market paperback. But then I was just looking at it thinking, you know what, this would be easier to read anyway. Because, it's, like I said, I feel like it's, for books like this, this long, sometimes it's better to read this size paperback rather than the mass market. But I still will probably, I mean, although I might stop buying mass market and just buy books this size from now on. But mass market, the problem is, is they're very popular. Books are always, a lot of books are put in mass market and they're just easier to buy. I mean, not easier to buy, but they're easier to read. It's just they're a little, you know, mass market is so cheap. And this is like, of course, actually, I, my, I did not realize this, but actually it's a thrift books. One of the, a lot of booktubers mentioned thrift, 
Rift Books hasn't used online bookstore, which I haven't wanted to use. It's just, again, like, when it comes to getting stuff online, my mom usually does the ordering things online. Um, and I think it's also a site you kind of have to sign up for. And I haven't got around to signing up for it yet. So, um, so like, I, um, so I'm going to start considering, I might talk to my mom and see if we can consider signing, I'm signing up for that because it would be a little cheaper than Amazon. I think maybe it'll be the same price. I don't know, but it's a used bookstore. So, um, I don't, I don't know if I want to just keep this one. I mean, I mean, I, I mean, I will keep this one, but, um, I don't know if I want to, you know, cha trade out the other ones for mass market paperback. I mean, paperback book size. Because I might not be able to get them. And I also have this weird thing about if I already have a copy of the book, then what, why do I need to buy another copy? Like, I, I just don't understand the appeal of buy, having multiple. I mean, I mean, I do understand, but I personally always feel like I don't need to buy, I don't need to have that many copies of a book. Because there's so many other new books I want to get, books I haven't read that I want to buy. So what's the point of having multiple copies of the same book that I already have? Um... But like I said with Jane Eyre, I gave my original copy to my cousin, and I don't see her that much, so I never got it back from her. So I just need to buy a new copy anyway. It's one of my favorite books. So, but either way, I like I like this new edition. I love the covers on these books. They're like I said, it looks like a painting. It's so beautiful. It's, but um. Question number third, the last question. Um, so, what books do you need to read by the end of the time, the end of the year? And there's a lot of books I need to read by the end of the year that I don't know if I'll get them done by the end of the year. Um, these are the last two. David Copperfield for one. I think this one I potentially could get done by the end of the year if I really focus on it. Um, I need, I already started this one so I'm sure I could potentially get this done by the end of the year if I, again, another, I, as long as I focus. Um, I would love to get this done by the end of the year. Elliot's Ellie Brooks's novel, Peace and Turmoil, but I do not know if I will or not. And maybe it's better if I don't because I don't know when her next book is coming out. Um, um, I would love to have at least two stories from this, this read. Um, this is a... Legends of the Dragon Realm, and it's a volume of of three stories in one, three novellas in one story. Well, they're called novels, but so three novel, three novels in one volume. I would like to get, I would like to try to get these read um, by the end of the year. I might read, read now that I have that new copy. I have the desire to read Jane Eyre. Um, like I said, David Copperfield, I want to read first before I read, before I even consider reading Bleak House. Um, I want to read this one, the third book in, in The Witcher. I'm going to go ahead, no, I mean, not the third, it's, yeah, it's the third book, technically, if you don't count the novellas, the short stories. I mean, not novella short stories. It's the third book, so I want to read this one. And what's great about these is they're, the chapters are long, but they're not that many chapters so I potentially can get through this really quickly um ideally the Odyssey it'd be great to get the Odyssey read by the end of the year but I don't know it's still a chunker of a book and I feel like I have to be in the mood to really enjoy a book like this so I do want to read it um Assassin's Quest ideally would it would be awesome if I got that done by the end of the year. You know, I really should get through this pile of books and then just put some of them back. You know, the ones I know I definitely will not get done by the end of the year. 
I mean, I did kind of have it organized in a way of books that I know will take me a lot longer, but then they fell apart again. Surprise, surprise. Um, Assassin's Quest, I would love to read, get that one done by the end of the year. Um, this one, I want to go ahead and get this one done by the end of the year. This is the third book in the Bar Set, Bar, Bar Set Shire series. Um, this is the third book, and this is, it's by what I've read of the, um, the little description, it sounds like it has an even more of a romance plot, like forbidden love kind of thing. Um, yeah, this, um, so a girl, a poor, a poor girl falls in love with this guy, a rich dude, a rich doctor, but is like, oh, you're beneath him, you can't marry him, kind of situation, so forbidden love kind of thing. Um, so yeah, I think I could potentially get this one done. Um, Bloody Rose, I want to get this one. The first book was a quick read, and I want to get this one done because, um, so that in the, because I'm, what might happen is, first of all, the chapters are not that long, and second of all, this might be a series that I'll end up donating anyway once I finish because it's I think it's gonna be a trilogy so and I feel like it's a trilogy that you don't have to necessarily reread the others to really get into it to you have to follow along there's only one other book anyway so like I, said, I think there's gonna be a third one and that's it this is basically a um like I think people compare it to the movie Red, where you have the old guys coming out, old CIA retirees, and they come out to you know because something big is going down, so they come out of retirement, and so the um the book, the first book, Kings of the Wild, is about again like a similar situation, but it's like they come out of retirement from being mercenaries. They, they were mercenaries originally, and so, and one of them, Gabriel, his daughter, has is trapped in the city, in the city that's being destroyed, and they must rescue, he gets the band back together so they can rescue her, um, it has a lot of 80s rock band references, um, hence the tagline of this one is, girls just want to have fun, um, and this is about the daughter. Gabriel's daughter, and she wants to follow in her footsteps and also join a mercenary band. And I don't know if it's going to take place around the same, same time or not. But like, there's times that like I get the impression that it might take around around the same time, like a mixture of a sequel and prequel story. Um, or maybe not. Maybe I'm totally wrong here, but. But it was the first book is really fun, so I'm sure this one will be fun too, and a quick read as well. Um, so I'm gonna do this here, and I probably need to consider reading. Um, um I feel like I want to read the next Edith Wharton book soon. This House of Mirth. This is another one I'm almost. I feel like I want to buy another copy of it that is like kind of like those copies of Bleak House and Jane Eyre. Because again, it's the mass market paperback. But it's what my sister had, so it's her book. Um, I mean, I could read this edition and then rebuy it and get this edition back to her if she cares. Because she doesn't like, again, she's not a big reader, so she might not care <laughs> if, I, if I give it back to her or not. But I feel like. It's the same thing with, with John Adams by David McCullough. It's my brother-in-law's book. And, you know, I've told him, I'm really sorry, I still have it. I just haven't got around to reading it. And I almost gave it back to him, but then he never took it back. He's like, he probably didn't know it was there and didn't notice it or anything. And I forgot about it. So he never, you know, so I was like, oh, I'll just keep it and maybe try again. And maybe I'll be more interested. But it's one of those books that it's like, I have to be in the right mood to be interested in it. But anyway, this is... I don't know much about what House of Mirth is about, actually. But it's Edith, Edith Wharton. I like her writing so far. 
and I think I got a pretty good idea of the kind of stories that she writes. You know, I've read some of her short stories, and then I read Age of Innocence earlier, which was a nice plus and surprise. Um, and I had a good time with that. That one was a little sad. That one was the romance was kind of sad and tragic. So I feel like we're going to get that. Also, um, Willa Cather's book were more, was more, and so was, Willa Cather's book, O Finders, is more sad, and then so was Thomas Hardy's Jude the Obscure. I mean, from what I've heard, he's just plain depressing in his books. Like, far from the madding the crowd is the happiest of his books. Um, and that was one of the ones I wanted to buy in that edition of Jane Eyre. I wanted to buy it in um, Far From the Manning Crowd, but I didn't get to it yet because I'm like, I don't know, maybe I'd, like, I'll like some things. I've only read one book by her. Um, but yeah, I want to get to this one. Um, there, there's so many in here that I need to get to. Um, the Magicians, it doesn't look that long. I need to get to this one because I love the TV show. Um, I know people critique the book and say that there are things in there that are questionable and it's kind of boring at times, but I still want to read it because, like I said, I love the show. And I have the whole trilogy, so. Um, the Poppy War by R. Huang. I want to get back into this one. So It's so interesting how these books, The Poppy War and The Magicians don't seem that long. I mean, look at their their size. They don't seem that long, but it's like, I get sidetracked by other books. Um, and this one's a little longer, I think, than it looks. Oh, does Barnes & Noble have a blog, too? I guess Barnes & Noble has a blog, too. Or they did. I think. I'm assuming that was a Barnes and Noble, but now Barnes and Noble doesn't. I don't think Barnes and Noble exists anymore. But these ones, I think, do not look that long. Um. But yeah, I need to get back into these as well. And then I need to read this one because I've read the night the Night Circus, so it's like, oh, that was like originally my excuse. Is I'll read the Night Circus first, and I've been meaning to reread it, so I'll read that one first, and then I'll get to the Starless Sea. And I still have not gone to the Starless Sea. I hear a lot of, most people love it, and it's hard to, it's hard to it's some review it because it's hard to explain what it's about, um, but the impression I get from what the book is about, it kind of reminds me of Shadow of the Wind, um, which I really enjoyed that one, so it kind of, like, there are aspects that the name, that this book reminds me of, that makes me think of, when I hear about this book, it makes me think of Shadow of the Wind with the premise and stuff. Um, but yeah, I didn't mean to get to this one. I still have not gone to it yet. And I don't have any excuse because I already reread The Night Circus. And it's not like the author has any other books. Like Erin Mor Morgenstern, I don't think, I think The Night Circus is, was her debut, so she doesn't have any other books. Like, but people were waiting a long time for this kind of book, for her to write a second book. Because there are a lot of people love The Night Circus, including myself. Um, what else? I'm gonna stop soon, but, like, I'll show you two more books that I need to read. Um, that I want to read by the end of the year. But these aren't even all the books I would love to ideally read by the end of the year. But, I want to read Valor, the second book. Um, in the Faithful of the Fallen series. I had been waiting so long to get this. And then last Christmas, um, my Taryn got it for me both the this one's long, it's not really that long. Um, then Terry got me books two and three. There's four books all together. She got me one and I was so happy to finally have it. And I did start reading it a little bit of it. But I haven't come back to it since, so I need to do that. I need to, this always happens, like, I will start a book. I will say, you know what, I'm going to start reading this book. And then next thing I know, I get sidetracked by other books. It's not that I don't enjoy it, you know, I'm not eager to read it, it's just, it's too easy to get distracted by other books. Like, it's like that whole joke about, you know, 
a dog is, you know, paying attention to you or checking something out, and then all of a sudden a squirrel runs by, I'm like, squirrel! Like, it's like that, you know, with me and books. Next, the other book that I'm going to mention, that I'm going to stop after I talk about this one, is The Great Hunt by Robert Jordan. This is the second, the sequel to The Eye of the World. And with this situation, I definitely want to get a book the second, I want to get as many books from the series read for the series, the TV series version as it comes out. Because I don't want to make the same mistake I made with um, Song of Ice and Fire series where I was like, oh, I'll just, you know, when the TV show is done, then I will get back to the books. Or during the summer, I'll read the books. And then I never did. Like, I reread this, I've read the first book twice now. I started... You know, I started Clash of Kings, which is the second book in that series, and I still have not come back to it. And it's probably, it might be in this pile somewhere. Or it might not, I don't know. But I have been meaning to get to that one. And it's just, that is a chunky book, and it's not always a thrilling book. Like, not a lot of exciting things always happen. And, um, so I don't want to make that same mistake again with this series, because it is going to be a TV series. Hopefully it's one that I have access to. Um, which I'm going to be disappointed if I don't. But I don't want to make the same mistake and neglect... Actually, I think it's a streaming network. It's on like Amazon or something. But I think I'm pretty sure I'll have access to it. Um, but I don't want it to be neglected, you know, and me make excuses and be like, oh, I'll watch the TV show and then I'll get back to the books and then never get back to the books. And that's the same thing with this series as well. Um, the Witcher series, I am making sure I get the books read first before I watch the TV show. Although, the TV show is going to be, well, it might not be being filmed as we speak right now, because of the whole pandemic. But, the show is going on now. So, it's like, um, I've read the short stories. I read Blood of Elves, finally. And if I can at least get the books read right before the new season starts then I might be in good shape. And this one will be a little bit easier because it's not as long. It's not as chunky, you know. It still looks chunky. The, like I said, the chapters are, are long, but they're not that many chapters. But this one is a different story because, I mean, look at these books. They are chunkers of books. Um, and like I said, the Robert Jordan's biggest criticism is he's very... He writes a lot of unnecessary details describing, it, like, what the characters are wearing and the culture and stuff. And that's not everybody's cup of tea. So, I mean, of course, he might think he might have thought at the time when he was writing these books that the details were necessary, because I think there was a like Daniel Green himself talked about it, and that maybe Robert Jordan felt like that was important to the story because he really wants to write about all these different cultures in this world. But again, I don't want to neglect the series, so. I need to read The Great Hunt soon, um, and like I said, if we go to visit my grandma, this might be a book that will come with me when we go when we go to her house and visit her for the weekend. Which lies the problem because there are so many books that I should consider bringing with me, and then I might not even get to all of them because we would probably only stay like a couple nights. Because from what my mom said, because I haven't really looked at my schedule, but you know, I didn't get the whole time off that for this weekend. And so I'm gonna, you know, we'll have to, my mom and I will have to go back early anyway. So as soon as we'll be taking two cars, so I won't have to be stuck sitting in the back with my dad in my dad's truck because that is kind of a bumpy ride. And at least if I ride with my mom, if we go, then at least I'll get to sit up front and we'll be a little more comfortable. The only downside of that is she'll probably end up listening to Dr. Laura because it's really annoying and I can't stand her. But my mom likes listening to it, and, you know, it's easier for her to listen to Dr. Laura when she's going on these long car trips. But then again, if I run with my dad, and my mom brings her own cars, then I would probably, I would probably sit up front anyway. Because, like I said, one of us, my mom's, my mom and I, or my dad and I will have to come back around. Well, it's, actually, it's probably going to be my mom, because my dad, because he, you know, he wants to stay, he's probably going to be the one that's going to want to stay and go fishing with my uncle, go golfing. So... It would be her and I will come back early if I work, so she'll have to 
she'll have to take me to work. So I'll probably, so if we go, I would probably ride with my dad. So I don't have to listen to Dr. Laurel the whole time. And then on the way back, I'll ride with my mom. If we got that. Just, I don't know if we're going or not. Because like I said, my mom is apprehensive about going because, you know, the pandemic and all my cousins have been around their friends. So my mom's a little nervous about that. But anyway, okay, so I'm going to stop there. Stop my rambling because there are so many books here that I know I want to read. And some of them I know I'm not going to get to. Oh, I see Clash of Kings. I, I just saw Clash of Kings already. But there's a lot of books here that I know I'm not going to get to by the end of the year. And the problem is I see them and I'm like, oh, I need to read that one. I need to read that one. Even if I know they're books that are impossible for me to get to by the end of the year, I'm still thinking, oh, I should read that one. And I think, oh, I'll take them off my shelf and then I'll eventually get to them. And it's like, yeah, honey, that's not going to happen. Why do you do this to yourself? Um, but anyway, so that was the last question. That was the end of the year book tag mid-year freakout tag, I should say. Not end of the year book tag, mid-year freakout tag. Um, some of these are probably going to come up with better answers. But like I said, I wanted to go ahead and film this. Um, but this is always a fun tag to do every year in the middle of the year. Your answers will never be, will always be different. A lot of times, most of your answers will probably be different each time. Um, so if you guys like this video, be sure and give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe if you haven't already. Click the bell notification below if you want to know when I post new videos. And I hope you're enjoying your reading. And I will talk to everyone later. Bye!